Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you're here. Thank you for joining me once again. Well, while many of us were sleeping last night, there was a magnitude 7.4 earthquake along the Aleutian Islands that was downgraded shortly after to a magnitude 7.2 by USGS. The earthquake triggered a brief tsunami advisory for southern Alaska late Saturday night, but the advisor was canceled. About an hour later, uh, they reported the earthquake was felt widely throughout the Aleutian Islands, the Alaska Peninsula, and Cook Outlet regions, according to the Alaska Earthquake Center. So the Cook Inlet is in this location. In Kodak, Alaska sirens warned of a possible tsunami and sent people driving to the shelter late at night, according to a video posted on social media. And I'm going to play that up there in the right-hand corner briefly. Let's see. The U.S. Geological Survey wrote in a social media post that the earthquake occurred 106 kilometers, 65.8 miles south of Sand Point, Alaska. It occurred at 10.48 p.m. Tsunami waves with uh, being observed were only about a half a foot. So that is good news. Back in 2020, there was a 7.6 close to the same location. Let's see. That would have been in October 19th. Then in 2021, July 28th, there was an 8.2 in this location. So far, there's been 15 aftershocks. Uh, this one's being counted on the map, but I'm not going to include that. And it looks like the largest was a magnitude 5.7. Yeah, um, they're all about, well, this one, 3.4, was shallower, 5.1 miles in depth. Let's see, the uh, 7.2 was 20.2 miles in depth. Uh, let's look here, we got a 4.6. 23.6 miles in depth, 4.7. You know, one thing I noticed that was really unusual about this earthquake is that this fault um, actually moved going south. Yeah, that would be the North American plate. And then it, it was locked, so that's why it created the uh, tsunami warning, and it rose up because it was locked. Um, but as I've talked about, we got the... Uh, plates on the move and the North American plate is definitely moving here. Yeah, so let's bring this out. We, this, The North American plate actually wraps around from the North America all the way down. Let me bring this out all the way through here. This is all the North American plate almost to the edge close to um, Japan. So I thought it was unusual that it was showing the North American plate, which we know is moving, and makes you wonder what are the implications of that. They actually do not know the length of this rupture. So they did an analysis, what they call the finite fault. If they knew the length of the rupture, it would have given them a better idea of how large a tsunami would have um, happened and the distance of the tsunami wave that it would have created. It's something that they're um, newly studying, um, I guess because it's a location where they really don't have a lot of monitors, so they don't know how wide or the length of the rupture. And that would be helpful to know if there's going to be a tsunami warning. I guess it is something they're studying. When Japan had its large earthquake and tsunami there by Fukushima. Um, yeah, they were looking into uh, figuring this stuff out. The majority of the earthquake, what they call the peak rate movement, lasted probably almost 20 seconds. And then it kind of settled down a little bit going into 40 seconds. I'm going to show you Yellowstone. 
Yep, it measured all the way over there. It, it actually made the earth ring like a bell. And the strongest signature came from Maple Creek. Yeah, Maple Creek released uh, a lot of toxic gases. There's the signature. Let me pull it over a little bit. See this? Yeah, it just sloshed the magma there at Yellowstone. How close is Yellowstone to an eruption? I don't know. They do know that earthquakes around the world can trigger volcanic eruptions. Let me bring this. Well, let me show you this first. See that? Volcanic tremors. Yep, that's the magma slash, sloshing around there at Yellowstone. And I'm going to try and make that bigger because we got, yeah, drum beats that it created afterwards there at Yellowstone. Yeah, look at that. It just all through there. It probably lasted these drum beats almost an hour. Yeah, and then it settled down. Let's take a look at the seismic signature. See, and that's close to the line of melt. Yeah, that would probably be in the um, upper magma chamber. Okay, yeah, for about an hour. And then let me pull it down here. This is what it was showing when I pulled the files. Okay, and we'll look at the seismic signature. This looks like, yeah, a series of harmonic tremors there. I was going to say, oh, look here. All right. I was wondering if it was tectonic because with the movement, now this is tectonic right here, with the movement of the North American plate, yeah, What's going to happen with Yellowstone? Okay, and there was two earthquakes prior to the earthquake. Now, this one here probably was along the uh, Snake River Plateau. I don't know if they reported it. Uh, 2.58 Universal Time. So that would have been at 8.58 p.m. last night. They did not report it. And... It probably, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. I'll make it smaller than what it probably was. Let's see, that comes in as a magnitude 2.06. I'll bring it down so those of you with larger screens can see that. And then there was another one at 509 Universal. That would have been at 11.09 p.m. last night. And, well, I could put it there or put it there. Again, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. 1.64. Again, this is Maple Creek. This earthquake shows up on four monitors very easily, you can see. On the far left is the borehole for Yellowstone Lake. Um, the middle, or the next one over is Maple Creek. That's this one right here. The next one is Western Boundary. Doesn't really show up at West Thumb, but it does show up here at Mary Lake. So there's no excuse not to report this earthquake. Then the one at 8.58 p.m. last night, you can see it on four different monitors. We got uh, the first one, let me bring this up, Maple Creek right here, uh, Western Boundary, West Thumb, and Mary Lake, so there's no excuse not to report that one also, but they didn't. So here you can see that they did not report either of those earthquakes. The last one was a 2.2. That was at 1.36 a.m. Um, there by um, Lima, Montana, where they've been having the earthquakes. Um, yeah, nothing, nothing for the Yellowstone area or anything since uh, 1 36 a.m. That would have been a local time. So the question is, where's the next one going to be? Yeah, we know we got the volcanic eruptions and the spreading going on there in Iceland. Um, yeah, that's also the separation of the North American plate slowly moving towards the west. Will it be Anchorage, Alaska? I hope you're all prepared for something large. Be aware if you're along the coast for future tsunamis, if there is a large earthquake, yeah, I wonder how long, how wide this rupture was. Yeah.
Yeah, have a plan. A lot of you probably um, are not used to tsunami warnings and don't know what to do if there is one that's uh, given out. Um, check it out. Good opportunity to check it out. Find out what your escape plan would be, especially along the uh, Cascadia subduction zone. Yeah, that'd be terrible if they have one over there. Um, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Always be prepared. The government is not going to come and rescue your butt. They're going to be more interested in uh, continuancy of government. Please stay safe, and I will talk to you later. God bless you. Bye.